What If is the latest Marvel Studios series to hit Disney Plus and their first ever animated production. It features the voices of more than 50 MCU cast members who reprise their roles from the films. Before we get into this, don't forget to hit that like button down below. It does wonders in getting my content out there. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to keep up to date with all my content. Marvel Studios' What If flips the script on the Marvel Cinematic Universe, offering an anthology of stories reimagining famous events from the films in unexpected ways. Creating a multiverse of infinite possibilities, What If features fan-favorite characters in wildly unique adventures, as the Watcher introduces us each week to alternate storylines that bounce around genres and tone. In this third episode, we're asked the question, what if the Avengers Initiative didn't originally go to plan? Alright, welcome back to another one of these uh, review, spoiler review breakdown videos that I've been doing for these episodes of What If. I've been enjoying doing these so far. I hope you've been enjoying watching them. If you haven't been watching these, I do want to preface this by saying, yes, this is a spoiler review. I feel like these episodes uh, individually are just so great and they all deserve their own little kind of breakdown and review video. So if you haven't watched this episode yet, I would recommend go and watch that and then come back to this because I don't want to spoil all those great surprises that are out there uh, for this episode. And so far, out of the three episodes that we've had so far, this is my favorite of the bunch. I think this one is so fun. Again, we have got a star-studded cast joining us for this episode. Again, another one I've had to just write down because there's so many of them. Chris Hemsworth is here as Thor. Jeremy Renner as uh, Clint Barton Hawkeye. Mark Ruffalo is here as Bruce Banner the Hulk. Tom Hiddleston as Loki. Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury, of course. Clark Gregg as Agent Coulson. So great to get some more Agent Coulson. Michael Douglas is in here. He's one of the big surprise cameos at the end of this episode um, as Hank Pym, of course. And we'll talk about him soon because it's very exciting. The two major glaring omissions from this episode, of course, Tony Stark and Natasha Romanov are both in this episode, but they're not voiced by Robert Downey Jr. or uh, Scarlett Johansson. We'll find that most of the actors are here. The great thing about this show is that like, they somehow have managed to wrangle 50 plus MCU actors to come back and reprise their roles but some of the more bigger ticket actors like RDJ and uh, Scarlett Johansson uh, did not return for this series. I think the people that they found to impersonate them have have done a really good job here. Like uh, the, whoever is doing, I'm not. Too, I'm, I apologise. I'm not too sure who is doing the voices here because I, I wasn't given the credits with this episode. I feel like whoever is doing the voice of Robert Downey Jr. does it really well. And even the Scarlett Johansson one, the Tasha Roman, really sounds like the character, which you never really think about Scarlett Johansson as having a real distinct voice but uh, whoever is impersonating this really does a great job of bringing that spirit and that inflection of her voice to the character as well. Now as I said this episode is my favorite so far of the three that I've been able to see. It takes us right back to the beginning of the MCU. You know we've got these origin movies and I love that it touches on the idea that Iron Man 2, The Incredible Hulk and the first Thor movie are all happening at the exact same time. You know their timelines kind of cross over. Uh, there's really great links between the actual movies but this is a really great you know when we talk about which order you should watch the MCU uh, uh, in chronologically there are people have so many there's so many arguments about whether you should watch Iron Man 2 and then the Incredible Hulk or whether you should watch the Incredible Hulk and then Iron Man 2 or you know whatever else I love that this takes that idea of we've got these three stories happening at once so let's kind of link them in some way and tell this story of Nick Fury assembling these Avengers kind of from his point of view, but then change something a little bit differently so that the Avengers initiative doesn't actually go to plan as originally intended. So essentially what's happening here is, is Nick Fury and Natasha Romanov are trying to recruit Tony Stark and Bruce Banner and Thor and uh, Hawkeye, Clint Barton, who's already on their team. They're trying to create this Avengers initiative, but something goes wrong in that someone out there is killing all of the candidates for the Avengers initiative before Nick Fury can get to them, uh, which is a really cool kind of interesting kind of take on it, I think. Now, I have said in my last couple of reviews that um, some of these episodes, I have a feeling, will have a second part. We will pick up and show like, 
what were the ramifications of this episode on the future of the franchise. I know for a fact that there is an episode coming up soon which is going to be like, what if the Avengers had a different lineup? And I feel like this episode here is going to be used um, kind of as the basis. Uh, so I don't think we're going to get these back to back. We're probably going to get a bunch of episodes and then we we'll kind of loop back and it's going to be a really interesting way of how they're going to be doing this. But I think it's going to be very fun because some of these, I again, I've been saying 30 minutes is like a perfect amount of time for these. Not too short, it's not too long. But some of them, particularly like this one, do end on a cliffhanger and make you feel like, oh gosh, I want to see what happens next. And I feel like we are going to explore that. Uh, of course, uh, Loki comes into the game here as well. So he comes into the narrative maybe a little bit earlier as a more of an anti-hero as, instead of a villain. So he's recruited by Nick Fury to help him in kind of trying to track down who is killing all of these Avengers. And at the end, it does, of course, turn out that it is Hank Pym in the guise of the Yellow Jacket, which is a really cool little throwback to the comics, where, of course, in the comics, Hank Pym did become the Yellow Jacket. So in this version, he is wearing the Yellow Jacket armor that is worn in the original Ant-Man movie, because an alternate take, he's wearing it, he's the villain, he's he's Yellow Jacket in this take on the MCU. I think it's so cool. And Michael Douglas is one of my favourite actors. Really cool to get Michael Douglas back in this, even if it is just for a little small cameo at the end. I didn't think it was him at first. I thought, geez, whoever is doing this, he's doing a really great Michael Douglas impersonation. But no, that is 100% him. And I think it's so cool that they could bloody wrangle Michael Douglas into this. Just as they did Kirk, uh, Kirk Russell in the in the previous episode. Just so cool. And you might there be there with me where the first episode maybe didn't blow you away straight away. I felt the same with that one. But then I feel as each coming episode, again, I've only seen three, but each coming episode just feels bigger and better than the last. The style and tone of these ones shifts with each episode to kind of match the movies. So the first one riffs on Captain America, the first Avenger. It's a very straight-laced drama war kind of piece. The second one is more comedic, like the Guardians of the Galaxy films that that's riffing on. But this one, it's kind of taking Iron Man, it's taking Thor, it's taking the Incredible Hulk, and kind of playing around with the different kind of, like each of those movies has a very different kind of style and tone. So this this one I feel like maybe takes more of like this, the tone of the, the first Avengers movie. Uh, where it has got a little bit of drama, it's got some great action, but it's got a little bit of comedy laced in there as well. Not a heap of comedy, not as much comedy, particularly as the second episode, but there is a little bit in there, just to kind of give it that, like, Iron Man comedic edge. I think it's a really great way to paint this. But yeah, this episode is just so much fun that it really feels like those early MCU movies, you know, that were so stripped back, that were less characters, less of the, you know, they just kind of felt, they just felt different. And this really kind of, it gave me the feeling that I that I had when I first watched those movies or when I do revisit those movies. And it's so nice to just get a little slice out of kind of that e area of the timeline, even if this is an alternate take on it. All the voice performers are, are so good in this. I mean, it's so wonderful to hear Samuel L. Jackson, like he will do anything. He obviously loves Nick Fury. He's like, yeah, just bloody sign me up for whatever. I will come and do Nick Fury. Um, so of course he was gonna come back and Clark Gregg is back as Coulson. Of course, Clark Gregg loves his character of Coulson. He's definitely back here for this. He will again play Coulson any chance he gets. I thought Tom Hiddleston was fun as Loki in here as well. We've just had the Loki series, so it's now interesting to go back to the beginning and get yet another spin on Loki too. Now what I, again, I love about this series is, is that it gives us stuff that we would never see in the movies. Now of course when Loki is, is uh, parading as Nick Fury, pretending to be Nick Fury, we get this great action scene. It's an action scene we never would have seen in one of the movies where Nick Fury is literally getting in like a, a fight with, with Hank Pym. He's doing backflips and somersaults in the air and like big high kicks and punches and stuff. It's so fun. And uh, this series really takes the advantage to... I mean, you could do that in the movies as well, but it wouldn't quite be believable. And I feel like this series really takes advantage of these things and goes, how? Oh, it's in, This is animation. This is an alternate timeline. Yeah, we can do these things. And I, I just... Uh, I feel like this series is opening up so many great possibilities and it's really starting to be seen right here because these episodes are they going along they're getting more and more outlandish and I, I we're gonna get a Marvel Zombies episode very soon I'm not too sure when that's gonna come into it but there's gonna be a, like just think about that like when would we ever think we're gonna get Marvel Zombies 
in the MCU. I think that's just insane crazy, and I love it. Uh, I'm loving this series more and more as it goes along, and I'm hoping that with each episode, I love it more and more and more and more. At that, I will be very happy to be giving this episode of Marvel Studios What If a four and a half out of five. Okay, so as this is the last episode that I have seen so far, this is the last of the pre-recorded uh, spoiler breakdown review videos. Um, now, at the time that I have published this, I recorded this, had it edited and uploaded about three weeks ago. So from here on out, as I said, I'm watching these with you, which means I will be dropping these episodes a little bit later than normal as, you know, I need the time to watch the episode, do the review, edit it, and put it up. Uh, but I will be continuing this series because I've been having a lot of fun with this, and I know you guys out there are enjoying watching them too. So thanks once again uh, to the incredible team over at Disney Plus for providing me with the first three episodes of this series for the purposes of video content from my, for my channel right here. And thanks everybody out there for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take it easy. Hey everyone, if you haven't yet, smash that big old subscribe button up on your screen to keep up to date with all my content and hit that like button down below. Also, don't forget to check me out on social media and please consider supporting me over on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month for exclusive videos, early access content and to get your name up on the screen. Thanks again for watching.